Okay, so here's the tools I used. Got my uh, pretty good size hammer. Um, got my drill there. Battery drill. And an adapter so that I can use the bits or the uh, the sockets 3 8 drive and I also used a half inch drive for the bigger bigger uh, fasteners there were about eight of those but I got the uh, the hex set right there standard hex bits um, I got the uh, lubricant slash penetrant uh, a little bit oversized ratchet and the file my other drill with a wire brush another wire brush there the uh, digital caliper then uh, 15 inch crescent right there right next to it is some really neat heavy duty locking pliers I'll, I'll go over those in a second uh, two other fairly regular screwdrivers one real big and short stubby then another that right there is another, uh, that's a, a wobbler or an angle type adapter for a 3 8 drive because some of the bolt heads were oriented where uh, there were other things in the way so I had to go around them. So that's pretty much all of the stuff it took to break all of that down, that 140 plus pounds. Uh, look at these locking pliers. I don't know what to call these except the jaws are um, well first off it's it's a little longer it's about 11 inches long I think and it's got a real good adjustment on it they're they're heavy duty they're Stanley Fat Max 10, oh, 10 inch it says uh, but the jaws First of all, the JAWS has some heavy-duty um, machined, okay, and the um, the ridges are really, they're relatively deep. They're not like a normal uh, plier. They're bigger and they're further apart, and they're not chewed up at all, and I've used these a lot. And the um, when you lock it, it's got a fine lock on it. You can, it's not like a regular vice grip, and uh, you can adjust it to uh, do a job that I don't think a lot of vice grips would do. But the surface area of the, of the, um, where it grabs is bigger than my other vice grips. And you can see you got some weld on that because I use these for welding also. They hold stuff together that I can't hold otherwise. But the the thing that they're really good at is. They're not curved, they're pretty much straight until you get right down to the, the smallest, but they're still pretty uh, parallel. And that's what allows them to grip better. They actually get stronger as the part gets smaller. They grip better, so things don't slide around in there at all. Once you get it, um, they're, ju they're just better than, uh, better designed, heavier duty than all my other vice grips. Okay, so, but this is the real, this is the real question I, I have, is, um, when I got done with all of what, all of I, what I did yesterday was 99% of it, and what I just did there was just, I kind of forgot that I had to take those other fasteners out. So most of it I was finished with yesterday. And uh, I got done and I went in. 
I looked at my wife, Jean, and I said, Jean, I just had a blast. That was one of the most enjoyable things. It took probably two hours, maybe. And uh, the first part was getting it here in the garage so I didn't have to carry tools back and forth and I could work a little more comfortably. And you know, 140 pounds, it was not an easy thing to pick up. And I had to get it up waist level to get it into my wheelbarrow, my two wheel wheelbarrow, which is more stable than the single one, but still not that great. And I tried to, I tried to tip the wheelbarrow and then hold it in there while I put the wheelbarrow back up. No, the 140 pounds did not allow me to do that because the wheelbarrow is too big for me to reach over the top. So I had to get in front of it. And, and my big thing was not to get hurt. No broken bones, no deep cuts where I was going to bleed out quickly. Uh, I did wrench my thumb pretty good. But I consider that the kind of, the kind of uh, thing that you get when you're doing stuff. And it's just part of, you know, I, I get injured every time I do a major job. Burn, cut, abrasion, bang, who knows. I just, and uh, that's just part of it, but I didn't want to disable myself. And if, when you get to handling big heavy, you learn after 60 years, real, real heavy shit that's hard to hold on to, that can hurt you, that can fall, you lose control of it, and if you can't get out of the way, Plus, you could break shit, and you know I really like my stuff. Even my piece of crap tools, I don't want to ruin. So, but when I got done, I just felt honestly, it was like sex. I know that sounds a little silly, but now I'm not 20 years old either. So, I probably wouldn't have said that at 20 or even 30. But seriously, I get, I make some pretty nice stuff. And I like when I'm done making something. It has usually I'm making something that I use right away, and it's got a real. It's really good that I have it once I make it. And yet, I think I get more joy out of taking stuff apart. And of course, that brings me back to my my youth, my real youth of before I was even five years old. I would get presents and birthday and, and Christmas and who knows what. My uh, aunts and uncles would bring me stuff and uh, I would dismantle everything. On Christmas Day, by the end of the day, anything that had moving parts was a part. And of course I wasn't really good at it and a lot of stuff, they don't have a lot of fasteners and kids stuff. So you got to break shit to get it apart, and uh, you know I'm. I don't remember my parents being upset, but they knew that people who paid good money for toys, like aunts and uncles, they probably wouldn't be happy it didn't last. Of course, they all had kids except for one set of one aunt and uncle, but um, whatever. The point was since uh, since my earliest days. Taking things apart was my thing. And even today, when I was scrapping last summer, and I made two or three hundred bucks the whole summer, that's not much for all the work. But I just love taking shit apart. Just a couple days ago, I took apart uh, a uh, microwave, and you know, there's parts that you can get a little copper. If you keep going, you take it down even further, but it's hardly enough copper to make it worth it. And yeah, I, I just like getting down to the smallest part. For one thing, you get to see how the thing went together, and it's a lot of times it surprises you. You're not, you know, even at my age, I usually know most things, but I do get surprised, and I like that. And uh, I like having to figure out how to do it in a way that, especially when I want to use these these uh, hunks of metal, I don't want to destroy it because I want to use it, and uh, and just it's it's also a certain amount of discovery.
for instance, you know, I, you can't always tell. Is that a piece of plate? Is that an angle and it's connected to something else and it's really not going to be that useful? Or is it going to come out all just a big flat plate with a couple holes in it that I can use? So as I'm taking it apart, I'm going, oh, that's a, that is one half inch and that thing is a, over a foot and about nine inches. So nine by 12 by a half inch piece of plate, that's going to be really useful for something. I don't know what yet. And uh, why, why am I going into all this? Well, one is it's cathartic. It, it's good for me to recognize what makes me happy. If you know what makes you happy, and then you can do more of it. And guess what? It cost me pretty much nothing. Almost nothing. A few squirts of fluid, the tools. I didn't break any tools. And uh, I get, I'll say one thing, I get my money's worth out of my tools. Even if I pay, you know, if I pay more money than maybe at Harbor Freight, I get, I, those tools get used until they fall apart. And then I take them apart and I use the parts. So, but I'm wondering how many people that are makers, and I consider myself a maker, how many makers are breakers? Or started as breakers? Do they always go hand in hand? Are there people that hate taking stuff apart, but they love making things? Uh, maybe, is it possible that they do like taking things apart, but they just never discovered that? Tough to say. Um, now I watch scrappers, there's a lot of scrapper videos, and a lot of the scrappers, they're not enjoying themselves. They want to rip that piece of crap apart, and if there's a hunk of copper in it or brass, that's all they care about. They don't care how it comes apart. Uh, I. I do appreciate speed, time is money, and I, when I'm scrapping, I'm scrapping to get it to its useful part, get the garbage in a pile, get rid of the garbage, okay, I, I get that, but I still do like taking things apart. And I also like having the tools, having them at hand, and especially specialized tools. When you take some stuff apart, for scrapping in particular, there's tools. If you got that tool, you might only use it once a day, but when you need it, it saves you a lot of time. So, I like the, the brain part of it, where you have to think about it, then you have to make the part. I, I make a lot of my own tools now. And I like getting the utility out of something that I've made after discovering that it would be useful to make it. And then the realization that I was correct. Some tools, you make them and nah, didn't really help that much. Way more work than it was worth. But you learn, that might help you down the road. So uh, hopefully somebody will get back to me in a comment and uh, let me know they're makers and they like breaking too or they never thought of it, they'll, they'll think of it now and uh, that would be interesting to me to know how many people like tinkering and building and also taking things apart does it go hand in hand or not thanks for watching bye